Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. All right. Um, let's see. I just need. It's so strange the way the angle of this is because I have a huge closet full of like, you know, spiritual things and then a tiny clothing closet. And the way the angle is, you see the, uh, my clothing really big and my shelving unit is so tiny. That's really funny. I guess it's kind of a fishbowl angle sort of thing going on here. Um, so I want to thank you all for joining me tonight or today. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> good morning, Denise. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Catherine. <laughs> um, so, uh, last night, um, you know, I ended up being a surprise special guest on, uh, Uma's, um, free spirit reading thing. Um, event and that was um pretty interesting and i'm mentioning this because you know we are all i'm teaching you guys how to work with your individual chakras and then we're going to get with like the energy flow and the base and how all the things you can do if you are empowered with your chakras and um so here's a typical example uh, normally Friday nights, uh, we have family nights, so I'm not, you know, I don't teach or anything, like during quarantine, I'm not talking about real life, during quarantine time, uh, Fridays and Sundays I reserve for like doing work and being with my family. But, um, this week we had family night on Thursday, um, and so friday night came and everyone in my household was busy with their stuff so you know we had dinner and i was washing dishes which i love doing i love washing dishes that is like the best way to open up and receive because you know like as i'm washing i'm thinking about the wonderful meal i just shared with people i loved and or even if i'm eating by myself it's you know and um you know, my hands are busy, my logical mind is busy, so my creative mind can be open. And that's when, you know, one of the times when I get so many messages just come pouring in and non-physical friends come and chat. So I'm washing dishes and just when I finished washing dishes, I'm, hi Yolanda, <laughs> hi Trinette, <laughs> and Kit, hi Kit, Kit Cloud Kicker, I love your name so much. <laughs> um, so just as I finished and I was hanging up the tea towels, a thought came in my head, you should go on Uma's uh, Facebook event right now. I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I know Uma's always invited me. Anytime you have a free Friday night, come and join us. And I never do because it's, uh, you know, family night. But I'm like, okay, well, I'm not doing any family night tonight. I'll just go and check it out. Thinking I'll just like watch and, you know, be an inactive participant for a little while and then get back to like the overwhelming pile of work I had procrastinated on uh, and had to do. Uh, like loading all of these Saturday programs to uh, YouTube and to my website so that you guys can access them without having to go through my Facebook page, stuff like that. Um, so I went online and it turns out that Uma and Rob were supposed to be giving messages together, but Rob had to cancel because he had accidentally double booked himself and he had to honor the other event he was doing. So Uma was there alone really wishing she had someone to work with her and she put out the wish i wish bonita were here and i heard in my head you should go on uma's event and this is how like when you get a thought that's in your head like huh i'm kind of bored now what should i do maybe i'll take a walk there's a resonance to it there's an energy to it and you can feel it's coming from you and your uh, inner mechani mechanisms. But when a thought is dropped into you, 
it's different. It's a different frequency. It's a different energy flow. It's a different resonance. And, you know, whenever that happens, I always honor it. Now, I don't go forward blindly without questioning, but something as simple as, well, I'll just go and check out and see what's happening. Um, and she had called to me psychically. And I heard her psychically because I allowed myself to be wide open. Well, you know, again, doing dishes, I always just open up. It's so nice. And, um, and we ended up like doing readings for people. And it was, and she was actually uh, started with a presentation on the divine feminine energy um, and the, the goddess energy. So how wonderful that I got to join in. And actually, she and I had a little bit of an argument about one of the details on there. So people got to see how two people who have a disagreement on the level of work that we do can still honor and respect each other, have a disagreement, and then acknowledge that we've just opened each other's minds to a way of thinking that we were not automatically predisposed to and go forward as friends and peers and cohesive teachers. So, um, yeah. Hi, Beata. Uh, hi, Leanne. <laughs> so it was a really fun, interesting night. I got no work done, but who cares? Because, you know, that was an amazing experience. So this is what I'm talking about on open up. And if the thoughts come in, you can always ask, is this my thought or was this thought given to me? And whatever answer you get, accept it. And then say, hmm, is this thought like good for me? And if you hear, yeah, sure, why not? Then you're like, okay, hmm. And then, you know, just go forward. Like, like I said, don't blindly follow signs without questioning, but don't block the signs and don't like question in a way to protect yourself or stop yourself go forward with research and question and open communication. And um, so I mentioned this because this is a big part of pineal gland work right there. Like when your pineal gland is connected and active and you're working it, this is the kind of thing that just becomes your everyday life. So um, I am going to ask like in comments, if, you know, I'm going to ask the question, um, how connected do you feel to your pineal gland? Do you, uh, are you comfortable receiving thoughts? And I misspelled receiving because I'm super dyslexic. I have yet to get, there you go, there you go. So I just posted that there. You guys feel welcome to make any comments, even if it's like, yes, I'm connected or I will be after today or whatever. I'd love to hear, you know, and um, if you want to share a story, go ahead. But if you just want to do one word, just like connect, uh, that's, um, yes, comfortable, but hadn't done uh haven't done much well that, that is fantastic so um today you see i'm wearing my heart shirt my heart to energy shirt which i i think i wore when we did the heart chakra but it was really cold so i had a jacket over it you couldn't see it but i thought i'd wear it again today because pineal gland is a wonderful resource for opening the heart chakra um so here, a little pineal gland energy. There you go. Dan, that's a wonderful question. What is a pineal gland? And Yolanda said, I receive thoughts all the time. Got one this morning and it was going to be, whoa, whoa, 
cautious about responding. Yes. Yeah. And again, you know, there's a difference between blocking and going forward with full comfort, you know? So I'm always talking with my guides. They, but again, like the more you communicate with them and, um, Dan, I'll answer your question in just a second. The more you communicate with them about, you know, and that again comes with pineal gland like power, the more you communicate, the more you get to know like when it's I'm like, just do it. Don't you know like um when you're a kid and with your parents and you're running around playing and your mom's like, stop, stop. And you're like, yeah. But when your mom does that, like, stop, and you're like, oh, you stop right away because you're about to step into, you know, something that wouldn't be good for you, like a beehive or something. Like you get to know the the tones and the voices and the energy and the emphasis in a way that you know how to work with it and respond. So to answer Dan's question, and oh, hi, Debbie. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. And um, you guys are making some great comments here. Just great. And um, Sunday was incredible. Thank you, Leah. <laughs> and so you guys, um, the pineal gland is one of the few energy centers uh, for spiritual work that is both equally physical and, you know, etheric. The pineal gland is as relevant when connecting with your angels as it is getting through your daily life. So it is a, um, a, a gland in the center of your brain. It controls things like a creative thought. Um, it gets your body calibrated with a sleep rhythm. And like when you travel, it's the part that recalibrates you to, um, um, <laughs> shoot, what's it called? Jet lag. Um, it's the part that works with you when you're in deep sleep, the REM. So it's really, really important on getting your creative energy and your physical body hooked up and connected. It is a real physical gland in your body. Um, but it is also an etheric, you know, like it's a, a chakra point, I guess. I don't know how you would call it, like a micro chakra or a chakra connector. So you have your crown chakra that comes in like a cone. So your crown chakra actually comes into your head, right? It's not just like up here. Like some people were like, oh, the crown chakra ends, you know, a little bit above your head. That's not really how I see it. I feel like that's like the big energy center of it, but it comes into your head and it rests down on the pineal gland in the center of your head. And your third eye is a cone going outward, actually in all directions around your head, but most of our awareness is in the front and some in the back. You know, like when they say you have eyes in the back of your head, that's third eye being active in the back of your head. Um, along with other senses, of course, but the other senses usually don't activate unless your third eye is, I mean, they'll be active, but you may not connect with them unless your third eye is active. So the crown chakra comes into you like this, and then your third eye is like this, creating a conical cushion for the crown chakra to nestle into. And the point where the point the center of your brain is the pineal gland right where, like if the crown chakra is like this nestled in your third eye, that's like this, and it all nestles right here, that's where the pineal gland is. It connects your crown chakra energy to your third eye energy, and it connects etheric energy with physical energy. And I love the pineal gland. And it connects messages given to messages received and understood. So the pineal gland is super, super important. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, so it also helps make the crown chakra and the third eye become one, which 
um, most people don't think about doing, but we do it naturally without realizing it. Like you're receiving a message from your guardian angel or your guide or whatever, and it comes in and it processes and it fills out and becomes like a vision or a message or a download. That is the crown chakra and the third eye working together as one. It's also the same if it's coming up from earth, from like nature magic, but we're going to deal with that at a future class right now. Today, we'll stay up here. Otherwise, um, it can get a little convoluted in, in our lesson plan. So here's one thing to remember, and one reason why I'm happy wearing my heart shirt today is the heart is also, there, get that in the heart is also um, physical and etheric. If those of you who were in our heart chakra class remember, the energy comes down to your heart chakra and flows up and down your body, but some of it also goes to your physical heart where the energy goes and mixes with all the blood and oxygen in your heart and pumps divine energy through your body along with all the blood and oxygen going to your veins, your arteries, to your organs, to everything. And also, some of that energy goes to your cosmic heart. You're the part of you that connects outward to others, the extroverted love. So it's introverted love, extroverted love. And um, because the, I'm sorry, this is like driving me nuts because I got all cockeyed. There you go. Because these two, I mean, really everything in us is physical and etheric, but these two are very actively physical and etheric. They connect really well together, really well together, which is one reason why when you receive messages, you're like, you validate it in your heart. Like, does this feel right? Does this feel the truth in it. And you're like, yes, my heart tells me yes. And then you open up even more and you get even more information. So um, I'm sorry, Mitzi the dog is here with me and she's having fun. She loves the energy of, of you know, whenever um, I attend meditations or anything or when I give them, she just loves being here and like basking in the energy. So um, the pineal gland is part of what allows your spiritual etheric world, you know, your inner dimensional being to connect with your physical 3D being. It allows your thoughts to connect with your messages. It allows your planning of your daily life to be divinely guided. Um, it's really a powerful, powerful gland. The other thing is, as I said, the heart allows you to send divine energy with your blood and oxygen flowing through your body. This is a great way to keep from getting sick or to reclaim your health because you are sending divine energy into every cell of your body because the blood and oxygen flows through literally all of your body, right? Well, the pineal gland activates your neurological system. So when you have an active pineal gland and your third eye and your crown chakra are connected and sparking with it, you are literally sending like, like you, it sends electrical pulses. So you are literally sending divine love to your entire neurological system. So imagine if you have your heart functioning, flowing with divine essence, and your pineal gland flowing with divine energy. Just think how healthy you will feel. No matter what issues you're dealing with in life, this will help. This will activate things in a good way. Now, of course, those of you, if you are sick or you have health issues, please understand there are so many reasons why we get sick and health, have health issues. Um, you know, like if you have some form of cancer, it could be that you soul contracted to have it 
or it could be a, a mercury factory dumped pollutants in your yard, you know, without you knowing it. So it's just like a horrible misfortune done by human destruction of the planet. It could be you made lifestyle choices that maybe you had not contracted to make, but you did, like smoking three packs of cigarettes a day or, or something like that. Or it could be you are absorbing toxic energy into your body and you don't know how to process and release it, which is sadly really common among untrained, empathic, intuitive people. So I will say every single situation and it also could be just the luck of the draw. Like sometimes all the best laid plans go to waste. So there were so many reasons why we become ill, but I will tell you, none of them are your fault. Every single one becomes a karmic challenge, but there's no blame anywhere. So make sure that you love yourself and you don't blame yourself for anything. Learn from it what you can from which platform of reality you're in. But activating your heart center, and again, we have that on a previous video, and also I will load it to, I'll, I'll let you know when I load it to all my stuff. And when you activate your pineal gland, it increases your chances of having a very positive karmic result from this and from like being the healthiest you can be while getting through whatever reality you're going through. So, um, uh, and also the least amount of blame and pressure because you're flowing with divine energy on every level. Um, okay, Dan, sorry to see you go, but yes, please, this will be on my Facebook page, you know, forever. <laughs> so yes, I uh, look forward to seeing you again another time. Um, master healing at 1122 there you go <laughs> okay so you guys um what i want to do is uh oh thank you trinette thank you <laughs> um yeah and you know we all have issues if we wanted to live an issue-free life we wouldn't come to life we would just stay in our soul state. You know, our soul state is like pure divine energy with no physical issues. So if you're gonna to come to life, you will have issues. Uh, the only exception is sometimes I've seen people where they've had a few really hardcore lives and so they decide to come and give themselves like a little holiday life where all they do is like swing in a hammock and have fun or someone's just like, you know, sometimes we give ourselves just like a fun laid back life or we're one with a group of people who live as one with the planet's vibration or something like we, we do have those. But if you're like watching this video, odds are you have chosen a life where you are guaranteed going to have issues um, because that's how we roll. Okay. Um, so what I would like to do is a little meditation where we are going to activate our pineal gland. We're not going to start the way I normally do with grounding. What we're going to do first is acknowledge our physical body because again, the pineal gland connects physical to energetic in a way that's very different from how the heart connects. So we're going to um, activate, uh, acknowledge our physical body, and then we will connect with our pineal gland on a physical level. Then we will activate our energetic body and connect with our pineal gland on an energetic level, and then invite the two to merge together. So, let's see how this goes. I have with me today. You know, I love my tuning forks. I love my singing bowls. Um, you know, I have a whole bunch of this stuff here. And for those of you who have singing bowls and tuning forks and all, if you have one that's pineal gland, you have one that's ohm, it's so wonderful to play the two together. Oh my God, so good. Um, so I have two pineal glands. I have a, a bell.
an eye of my bowl. So I'm going to play both. But first, uh, you all get settled. Um, Crystal, you were driving. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't drive while listening to the meditation. Or if you do, don't space out, please. How do you know if there's a soul contract to have illness? You may not know till after you're done with life. I mean, that's really like, we don't always know. <sighs> Here is what I've been taught after giving like literally thousands of past life readings and with all the time I spend in the Akashic Library. If you contract to have something, then you're in it to learn a lesson from it for your soul to help grow and evolve and expand your soul. So learn what you can from the experience and take it to the highest frequency that you can. If there's any pain or anger or remorse or any, you know, really like hardcore, like negative emotions, learn what you need to learn to release them and go forward with whatever path feels right, either a path of recovery or a path of endurance or a path of death or, you know, choose a path. But if you soul contracted to have an illness, it's going to be for one of two reasons, usually. It's either you or someone who's caring for you needs to learn a karmic lesson that this is imperative for. Or you contracted to come to life and die at a specific time because um, either that's all you need for this time in life or you need to, like, you there's a lot of people who contracted to come to life now and then die now so that now that they're energetically connected to people and places and frequencies when they go and join there's like i'm telling you there is this whole crowd of souls out there sending love to us the some of the people who are dying now are like going up there but they're connected to those who are working down here and able to power them up, send them a lot of love. So, you know, there are many reasons why you may have contracted, I mean, not one, where one may have contracted to have an illness or to die. So it's either for a lesson for self or for someone else, or it's for the timing of things. Either way, the more you learn from it to find your way back to a harmonious state of love, the more you are like, okay, this is all complete and I don't need to come back and continue the lesson. Because any karmic lesson, you learn from it, you release everything you need to release, become emotionally neutral and find your way back to joyous love. If you go through something horrible in life, but you're able to do that process, odds are that was, and it's like very natural to do it. Like you find you're able to do that without like, um, well, odds are that was a soul contracted situation. Like I had a past life where um, uh, this was in the time of Henry VIII and I was just like farm girl. And anyway, um, I got pregnant, my dad, kicked me out, like beat me to near death and kicked me out. And I was alone in the forest. You know, I nearly died. The baby died. And I found my way to a convent where I ended up really doing some very relevant work. I was very clean down the road <laughs> after some work to what my father had done to me because he had to do that as a soul contracted relationship to get me to where I needed to be, to be able to become who I need to become. There was no way for me to do that without some major inspiration to get to there. Um, and then to help others who had, you know, deep suffering to overcome. So that was a soul contract relationship. I've seen plenty of times where a parent has soul contracted to be loving and nurturing to their child, and then they end up 
due to things in their life not going to plan. They end up being like horrible and abusive. So it's the same situation. It's not soul contracted, but the answer is the same. Learn what you can from it and find your way back to self-love and self-joy. Because I'll tell you, when you die and you reconnect with your soul, all of the pain and the anguish you're feeling will be gone. So if you're going to release it anyway, you may as well release it now. All right? Um, you know, learn from it. And it's not about forgiving or condoning them. It's about releasing that which doesn't serve you. And that's not, again, a moral value or a judgment or anything. It's a technical process. Um, and I am happy to teach that. I'm happy to teach that class because it's a valuable technical process. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry, I took us way off course there. Um, and I hope that that was helpful and not convoluted and confusing. Um, but the answer is always find your way back to loving and appreciating yourself. That is always the answer, no matter what. Okay, so I'm inviting all of you to relax. Um, and I'm inviting all of you to relax and give your bodies permission to relax. It's okay if your eyes are open and spaced out or closed and breathe however you want to breathe. I'm going to play the pineal gland ball and ding the bell for about a minute. You may feel energy shaking off of you. You may feel resonances in your body and you may feel activation in your head. And then we will begin our meditation. If anything feels uncomfortable or painful, acknowledge it and give it permission to resolve itself. We become very protective. And sometimes when an energy comes in, even if it's a loving, beautiful energy, we can like sort of seize up and like try to push it away. And it creates pressure and pain and, you know, dagger pains or pressure pains or and that's just your body's natural response of something foreign coming in all you have to do is acknowledge it thank your body for caring so much about you give it permission to relax Give your body permission to relax.
feel your skin, you know, with your mind's eye, with your awareness. Feel your skin. Feel how the air touches your skin. And how the temperature of the outside of your skin is cooler than the temperature on the inside of your skin, where your body's flesh and meat and activities always keep your body at somewhere between 97 and 100 degrees, but the outside of your skin, the temperature fluctuates greatly. Just let your awareness run along your skin. Feel how the temperature of the outside of your skin under your clothing can be different from that where your flesh is bare of your arms, your neck. your feet. As you're feeling your skin, you can feel the body's mechanism under your skin, your heart beating, your lungs flowing in and out with the air, contracting, expanding. As you swallow your throat, Feeling your nose, how the inside and the outside of your nose have such different energies going on that actually the inside of your nose as you breathe in will feel completely different from the temperature and energy on the outside of your nose. Your eyeballs. So moist and so exposed. You can even let your awareness feel how your eyeballs are not just the front, but flow back into your head. The nerves that flow into your brain may feel how very connected your eyes are. You can bring your awareness to your organs, your digestive system that is happily working on whatever food and drink you've had in the last 24 hours. You might feel it. You might even be able to feel where in your digestive system most of that food is right now. Your kidneys, your livers, all of your organs working around the clock 24 seven to keep your body flowing. Filling your body are your veins and arteries, always flowing with blood and oxygen that has been pumped to them from your ever beating heart. Your heart starts beating when you're just barely the tiniest thing in your mother's womb. And it continues beating every single moment until you draw your last breath of life. You feel all the muscles and the sinews, how the muscles, if you're sitting, how they feel in your sitting area versus in your upper back or your neck. You'll have areas of tension that are from emotions or habit, areas of tension that are from just your current position. 
you can feel how different those tensions are. One tension is part of your body's activity, and the other tension is part of your um, stress, anxiety, recovery of old injuries that have not completely recovered. You know, that's like your karmic lessons. When we have an injury, there's a part of our muscles that want to contract around the injury to protect it. And even after the injury itself is resolved, that tension stays out of habit just to make sure this sort of injury never happens again. You are not completely recovered from your injury until that stress, that ache, that sharp pain there, the uh, buildup of scar tissue, and lactate acid is resolved and released. In fact, that protective energy is more likely to make you injure yourself again and again. Or when times of anxiety show up, will contract your body back into the injured position out of habit. But once you completely resolve and release all of that muscular protection, the injury is now fully healed and you are whole again. It is the same with our karmic lessons. We experience them, we get beyond them, but we are still in the lesson until we 100% release all connection and trace of it and feel complete on our own with it no longer emotionally connected to us psychologically connected. Whenever you find an area of muscle tension that occurs without your choice, that's an opportunity to resolve physical karma, spiritual karma, emotional karma, so that you can move forward with your life with calm, joy, love, relaxation, and good flow, happy feeling. So honor your pains and aches. Get to know them and invite them to help you with your personal evolution. So let your awareness just run through your physical body. Whatever you see, acknowledge and, you know, Thank it. Feel gratitude to your body. Without your body, you wouldn't even be here. So how wonderful, how wonderful that your body is giving you so many life lessons that you can take to your soul and help grow and evolve your eternal experience. Now bring your awareness to your head. At this point, you might actually feel like there's a little aching or pain in your head because we've been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of work, a lot of focus that we don't normally put our bodies and our minds through. So thank your head and thank your mind your creative energy for being with you as you go through this unusual journey. Invite your head, invite your neck, invite your scalp and your forehead, invite your eyes and your cheeks and your chin. Invite all of this, your ears, to absorb your gratitude to be filled with your love and appreciation and invite all of this, everything, your shoulders on up to just relax and accept all the good stuff that's about to come.
invite your awareness to go in through your scalp where your hair follicles connect with your flesh and into the inside of your skin where all those lovely little, little micro muscles and nerves are like firing up and in through your bone, your skull, and the cartilage of your ears and your nose, and into your brain itself, which is an amazing neurological wonder. Flow in through all of that to the very center of your head, the very center of your head, which is between your eyes and that little indent in the back of your head, right above where your spine connects to it. If you want, you can even put your hand up behind your head and go down to the base of your spine or the base of your skull, just above your spine. You feel that little indent. Put your other hand on your forehead, right above. And just massage gently. And you can move your fingers around a little bit. Just massage gently from the front and back. You can move around to your temples and the sides. Just massage your head wherever you want. Stretch it around a bit if you like. Invite all that energy to stimulate and flow through to the center of your head as though extensions of light and love are flowing from your fingertips and they're all meeting in the center of your head at your pineal gland. Your pineal gland which manages like your creative thoughts, your dreams. It balances your sense of time and awareness. It takes you into deep sleep and gives you wonderful messages. Your pineal gland, which sparks up um, your neurologic system from the top side, just as you have 32,000 nerve endings in your feet and like 20,000 in your hand. Maybe that's reversed. I'm not a neurologist. You also have nerve endings in your brain and they are all sparked by your pineal gland. Right? All this energy that you put into your head to spark up the pineal gland in your center of your head and send that electric pulsing light that it is literally sending out to your entire nervous system. Feel it flowing all through your body. And if you want, you can even energize your hands and your feet. Let your entire nervous system light up. If that's too much for you, don't worry. Just let it all start with your pineal gland and flow out. If you have too much energy, let it flow out the palms of your hands and the bottom of your feet. Let it flow out from your body, out your skin. You're electrifying your flesh and your skin. This is part of the power of the physical pineal gland. It energizes your body. It gets your juices flowing. And now, you know what? Invite your energy to flow. Invite your root chakra to just spread out deep and wide like the bottom of an hourglass. So all of this beautiful energy 
that's in your body can just spread out and flow. And invite your crown chakra to open up high and wide, like the top of an hourglass, so that all of that beautiful energy can flow into you and through you and on out. Invite the top of your head to open up, to feel light and airy and tingly, like it's expansive. Like maybe you have electrical shocks coming in through the top of your head or tingles. Invite that energy to come in and fill your head. If you feel any pain or pressure, acknowledge it. Give it permission to release all on its own. Just invite the energy to flow in, flow through, and flow out. As all of this beautiful, sacred divine energy is flowing in through the light and airy top of your head, flows into your mind, Feel it flowing around on the inside of your head, activating your pineal gland, activating your third eye. You may feel your forehead and your eyes opening up. You may feel the back of your head opening up. And again, if you feel any pain or pressure or queasiness, acknowledge it and invite it to resolve itself. If you feel too much energy is flowing in, keep it flowing through, keep it flowing through, all the way down through your legs, through your feet into earth. If you all can expand the center of that hourglass so that you're actually floating in a tube, that should release any pressure, no more bottleneck. And if you feel any pressure in your head, just re invite it to release. You're activating your senses. You're activating your third eye. You've already activated your physical brain. This is a lot. Just invite the energy to flow. Don't worry about what you'll do with it now. Just invite the energy to flow through your mind down through your body, out through your head in all directions, like your head is a glowing light bulb. Invite your third eye to open up. You may feel at this point already, like your pineal gland, third eye, and crown chakra are one. Or you may feel them as separate entities, but all lit up. However you feel is perfect. Invite this energy to flow in, filling the top of your head, flowing down, activating your third eye. And in the center of it all, your pineal gland, lighting up, activating. So that all the divine messages and energy frequencies that are flowing in are becoming tangible energy for your mind, body, your spirit, your emotions. You may feel it more on a spiritual level. You may feel it more on a physical level. Your body knows what is best for you at this moment. So take a minute. And we'll play the singing bowl. Release all need to manage. Just invite the energy with your awareness of the flow and keeping open. Invite it to come in. See if it becomes more physical, more spiritual, if there are any messages or visions or emotions or awarenesses that come with this experience. Neal gland, 
do your thing. And now invite this energy to just calm down a little bit. Remember the pineal gland is as physical and neurological as it is spiritual, etheric, as it is emotional. It is a fully charging experience. So allow your awareness, invite your awareness to return to you in a comfortable, settled way. And notice which one of your bodies, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, physical, etheric, wishes to be most present. And invite this part of your being to show you where the activity, where the flow would like to most support your growth. It may bring your awareness to some sort of uh, distressed part of your being that wants to receive releasing and love. Or it may be a part of you that wants you to acknowledge, or it may be a part that wants to receive something from, you know, the divine. Some part of your body has a message for you on how you will best benefit. Invite it to present itself. Beautiful. Now invite your body to return to place, return to self. Maybe stretch a little bit. You might want to rub your hands together and hold them over your eyes and your third eye. Give your head a little bit of massage. You have been purposefully working parts of your neurologic an energetic being today that you may not have even known existed, much less how to exercise it. So just like anytime you do any sort of workout, you want to give yourself a little cool down time, a little stretch, a little sort of self-appreciation that you did this. So I hope that this was good experience for you all and um, if anyone has any comments or questions please 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 share them I know this is a, 
unusual class that we shared. Oh, thank you, Heather. Thank you. And I want to thank you all. Thank you, Crystal, for your beautiful comments and encouragement. I want to thank you guys. Like, I know that this is just like a, a little free one hour program, but this is intense. This is intense. Like, oh, thank you. Thank you for all the hearts. Like, when I studied Prana Shakti with Guruji Arun, um, and he first taught me how to work the pineal gland. Like, he and I alone, just the two of us, spent an entire day on it because this is intense stuff intense oh thank you thank you denise and yolanda um <laughs> yes heather it's intense so give yourself a little break right now drink some water for sure um you know do something really pleasant and soothing for yourself right now just do something really nice and self-loving you know i'm about to go outside and work in my garden for a little bit just something very connecting with self and allow everything to settle because i'm telling you things got fired up in you today right now and things opened up and your guides your non-physical friends your mentors they're going to make use of this so let yourself stay open in a way that is very loving for self and you'll see things are gonna, like I guarantee for a big chunk of you, things are gonna happen today. Um, oh, thank you guys. And for those of you who are joining me today at 3 p.m. on Zoom, and I'll put the link to the event here, and we're connecting with the Akashic Record librarians, like they're so excited, <laughs> they're so excited um they don't even know what they're going to talk about right now like they keep telling me what they want to talk about i'm like dude that's like a month's worth of information you got to cut it down so they're like like every time i check with them they're all over they're like debating do we want do they want to talk first about how and why earth was created do they want to talk first about like what's happening in the here and now on our planet do they want to talk first about where our planet is going new earth do they want to talk like they're like they got so much to share so much i suggested to them that they should talk about you know humans with self-healing um and they're like oh look at the little puppy trying to tell the wolves how to run the pack you know they're, they're teasing me um so I don't know what they're going to talk about, but that's just as well. That's just as well, because I don't want to be in my head about, oh my God, I don't know anything about that subject. So for those of you who are confused, I channel the uh, Akashic Record librarians and they're channeling today 3 p.m. at Zoom. I'll put the ticket link there if you want to join us. And, um, you know, they're going to be back a lot. <laughs> so yes i'm so excited to share this for you oh wow crystal thank you thank you yes third eye and heart i mean think about it when you activate the pineal gland you're connecting your crown your third eye and your heart to your every single of your five bodies i mean this is big this is big you guys learned a big thing today so honor yourselves with how amazing you are that you came and you tried this you did this and um you know maybe like we can do a bigger program about this down the road you know like uh you know like a two hour three hour i i honestly i think just this one thing the pineal gland deserves like a four or five hour program because it's intense stuff um okay uh crystal i will put the link to uh today's event uh in fact i will do it right now hold on um okay so okay where are you guys okay today's 3 p.m event Today's 3 p.m. tickets are here. There you go. And um, so just so you guys know, I sent an email out to everyone who already bought a ticket. 
um, with the link to the Zoom. If you go into the class you bought, lesson one is like the introduction and all that. Lesson two, it says link to today's event. So you go to lesson two and you like click on the link and it takes you to the Zoom event. If um, you're buying the one-off ticket, then you get to join and watch and that's awesome. If you are the monthly subscription member, um, you will then like, I will download the video of today's event to the monthly subscription page for today. And you will have access to the backlog library of all the events, as well as the uh, librarians give, like their, their plan is to give daily micro messages. I have a feeling it'll be like at least three, five days a week is what I think. They sometimes they give me great plans. I'm like, oh, okay, and how are we going to make this happen? They're like, oh, you will make it happen. I'm like, oh, thank you. Just like every guru I ever studied with. Awesome. Um, so, Melena, you didn't get the email? I, I, mm, okay. I will resend to you purposefully right uh, as soon as we get off here. Um, Super itchy nose, cool. <laughs> Crystal, yes, you know whenever we are connecting all of the bodies, um, our earth magic friends come, and Sasquatch, definitely. Sasquatch loves this stuff. So people like Crystal and me uh, who work with Sasquatch, yes, this is a great way to call Sasquatch into your existence because they work in multiple dimensions, multiple frequencies at once, including physical and including etheric so yes for my squashy friends yes <laughs> okay uh yeah check junk mail yeah for and it, uh for those of you like weirdly enough melena and i like she's been texting me i'm not getting her texts i'm emailing her she's not getting my email so there's some kind of energetic thing Odds are most likely there's some mischief makers who are trying to keep us apart because um, Milena is growing, like becoming an energetic powerhouse. And I actually, you know, Milena, with my connection to you, I'm growing so much more too because you just bring such wonderful energy and frequency. You raise my vibration. So I think that there's little mischief makers like uh, reptilian near do wells or whatever that are trying to like keep us apart. So I like, forget it. We're stronger than that. Um, okay. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, you guys can start the subscription anytime. Like some of you, you know, I understand you want to do a one-off ticket, check it out. Is it really worthwhile? You know, uh, right now the cost of the one-off ticket and the monthly subscription is the same. So, you know, I wanted to keep it all like super affordable so no one feels chipped in any way or overwhelmed in any way. But, you know me, I'm easy breezy. If you... Uh, join here where they're in a one-off and then later go i want a subscription you'll still get the total backlog including whatever events you would have missed if you're like nah i don't need this in my life now and then a year later say i want a subscription you'll still get the total backlog of everything to catch up on um okay i'm fine liz i'm fine thank you for asking and um, and again, you can, anyone who came in late, uh, this video will stay up here on my Facebook page. Feel welcome to grab it. Um, and if you guys want me to put together a bigger pineal gland interdimensional program, um, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. That, um, that would be a lot of fun. I would love that. And then, who knows, maybe we can get our wonderful Featherway Shaman friend, Garrett Duncan, to come and join us once we're activated and connect us all with Sasquatch and, and uh, nature animals. So, you know, that might be a super fun. Thank you. Okay, I got enough hearts. I will talk to Garrett this week to see if we can't put something together. 
All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. And I guess I will see some of you at 3 p.m. today and others I will see another time. Either way, love yourself, honor yourself, and really just be one with this experience. Remember, anytime you feel any, you know, discomfort or queasiness, remind the energy to flow and stop and just like be gentle and release. Okay. Bye.